Here at Pro Tool Reviews, we have the privilege of testing and recommending some of the best tools in the industry. But what if you're shopping for something that we haven't reviewed? Our team got together to share what we look for before pulling the trigger on a new cordless drill. If this is your first time with Pro Tool Reviews, thanks for clicking on our video. We hope it's helpful. While you're here, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on the latest product reviews, buying guides, and tool tips. When you're buying a cordless drill, price is one of the first things you need to consider. It's possible to get a cordless drill for less than $50 or spend well over $500 for a top-of-the-line model with specialized accessories. In general, $50 to $100 is a good place to find DIY drills. $100 to $150 moves you into what we call prosumer for serious DIYers and entry-level pros, and $150 plus takes you into the professional level. See a smoking hot deal? Make sure that that price includes a battery and a charger unless you already have a battery for that system. Also, keep in mind how you're going to use your drill. If you want to do projects that take hours to complete, you probably need two batteries so that one can charge while you use the other. Kits with two batteries are more convenient, but you'll need a larger budget. Sometimes getting a kit with a drill, an impact driver, and two batteries isn't much more, so take a look at those and you might score an incredibly helpful screw driving tool to go with your drill. The next thing you need to keep in mind is performance and power. Now, torque is a measure of rotational force and gives you an idea of how much muscle the drill has using inch-pounds. Speed is given in RPMs and measures how fast the drill can spin a bit. Just hanging pictures or putting together the occasional bookshelf? 300 inch-pounds of torque is plenty to get the job done. Look for drills over 350 inch-pounds for general maintenance and projects around your house and get at least 600 inch-pounds if you're the kind of guy or gal that likes the idea of doing your own renovations. If you find yourself working with large hole saws and self-feed bits, then you're going to want a premium professional drill, those that hit 1,000 inch-pounds or more. Now that's pretty solid advice unless you're shopping within the Stanley Black & Decker group, including Black & Decker, Craftsman, and DeWalt. They use unit watts out to describe power instead of inch pounds, and while some of the measurements seem close, they're not the same. For those, stick with 200 unit watts out as a good starting point for light duty tasks, 350 unit watts out gets you into the middle range, and then 800 pushes you into that premium performance category. When it comes to speed, a single speed drill around 600 RPM can handle a lot of the basics. A two speed drill is more versatile and select manufacturers, typically on the high end, even make three and four speed drills. In general, 1500 RPM in high is a good DIY target and you'll want at least 1800 RPM for more serious work. Most of the premium models run 2000 or 2100 RPM and there's even one drill from Metabo that's 3000. This might be a good time to bring up the inverse relationship between speed and torque in a drill. If you have multiple speeds, you trade off one for the other when you switch from high to low. In a typical two-speed drill, high gives you the maximum speed at the cost of torque to turn the bit. When you run into a pinch where the bit binds up, drop it into low gear and you get more torque with less speed. Voltage is closely tied to speed and torque. 12 volt drills are usually smaller and lighter than 18 volt models and are good for almost all light duty jobs. 18 volt and 20 volt max drills offer more power. Now contrary to popular belief, 20 volt or 20 volt max drills actually run at 18 volts. At their fully charged state, all 18 volt batteries measure at 20 volt briefly before settling back into their 18 volt nominal state. In fact, 12 volt drills are another max voltage and actually run at 10.8 volts nominal. Check out our 18 volt versus 20 volt max batteries video for more details on that. If you're feeling kind of in between the smaller, lighter 12 volt class and the greater power of the 18 volt class, consider a compact 18 volt drill. They strike a balance between the size and performance of the two. One last big decision you need to make is whether you need a drill or a hammer drill. If you plan on making any holes in concrete, a hammer drill will make the process much faster. It uses a slight chipping motion along with its rotation to speed things up. Most of the time, the hammer drill is only $10 or $20 more than its drill counterpart. With price and performance driving the biggest part of your decisions, let's shift over to features and see what you might want to add if your budget allows for it. Size and weight can make all the difference between whether you love or hate your cordless drill. The handle design and balance play into it as well, and rubber overmold can improve your comfort and grip. For example, 12 volt drills tend to be more compact overall, but some locate the battery in the handle giving it a much thicker grip than designs with slide packs. A brushless motor is a significant upgrade. Its design is more efficient than brushed motors and can give you more power and up to 50% longer runtime. If you have medium to heavy duty projects on your list, look for a drill that comes with a side handle to help out when drilling bigger holes and using lower speed. 
When a drill binds up and suddenly stops, it can cause the drill to move in the opposite direction quickly, causing a painful injury to your wrist or elbow. A side handle lets you put two hands securely on the drill to control it better in the event that happens. In the same vein, some drills have an electronic anti-kickback control. It's a sensor that detects when the bit binds, causing that sudden spin we just talked about. Almost as soon as it happens, the electronics stop it quickly, helping prevent those injuries. This is becoming one of those must-have features for professional level drills. Also, keep in mind the chuck size when you're looking at those jobs that take more muscle. Less powerful, compact, and consumer level drills come with a 3 8 inch chuck that can take most bits, but you'll need a half inch chuck for things like self-feed bits and certain large twist bits. More powerful prosumer and pro-level drills use these half-inch chucks for that very reason. Most LED lights are either mounted on the foot of the tool just above the battery or just above the trigger. Some drills even have lights surrounding the chuck, which are much better at getting rid of the shadows. No matter what kind of LED light your drill has, just make sure it helps you see what you're doing when you need to drill a hole in low light. Drills that boast an all-metal gearbox are likely to hold up longer than models using plastic or nylon gears. Likewise, an all-metal chuck is much more durable than ones that use plastic components. Speaking of chucks, a ratcheting chuck gives you a much better grip on the bit you're using and reduces the possibility that it will slip out or fall during use. Nearly every cordless drill comes with a belt hook. It might not seem like a big deal, but the first time you have to hold your drill in one hand while you're climbing a ladder, you're going to wish you had one. Most of these are reversible and you can switch the sides with a screwdriver. Bit holders are also handy to keep a double-sided slotted and Phillips bit nearby for occasional basic screw driving, but it's not something we use much on a professional level. We consider this one pretty negotiable. Before you make your final decision, the last thing you need to look for is what other tools work with the same battery. Can you get all the tools you need without switching platforms? If you can, you'll save money in the long run and you'll need less storage for batteries and chargers. We certainly hope this helps you sort through your choices when you're buying a cordless drill. If you have any questions or feedback, or if we missed a feature that you really care about, feel free to let us know about it in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. Hey, help us out by subscribing to the channel below and tap that bell to get notified when we post new tool reviews and shootouts. And as always, thanks for watching.